Welcome to Click to Learn More, the show that sounds like clickbait. But it's actually two dorks. I'm Dorm. I'm Liddy. Liddy, you were about to do a face thing. I don't know what you were just doing. <laughs> so before, you had your mouth, you had your maw <laughs> wide open, ready to bite. I don't know what you were doing. Maw. I don't know what Bef- you're doing. Before we started the episode, I was making mouth noises, and I was just trying to make more mouth noises. Mm. Uh, and so I was acting like I was going to interrupt you during your introduction. Also, just so we know, or just so it's said, I know uh-huh. it's audio only now, but we're sitting for the <laughs> first time not in the video configuration and we're just looking at we each can... other. And this is kind of strange. We're just making a lot of eye contact. I love the idea. That I, like, I, don't know, I don't know how people imagine we normally record this yeah. show. <laughs> like, maybe they've always thought it's like this. Mm. But we normally <laughs> sit kind of like... Like uh, at, we're at, in the corner. Yeah, we're in the on opposite corner. sides. If you've seen the video version of the podcast, yeah, you know. Yeah. So we used to look at the camera when we would talk. Right. And then when the camera went away, we would still stay in that way, but kind of just like tilt in a little bit. Yeah, and just kind of look at each other sometimes. But now we have to because, like, if I don't look at you, I'm gonna. Have to stare <laughs> yeah, we up. look at the camera still, although there's no camera. Yeah, we just no look camera. in the general direction. Yeah. Um, do you do that though? Like, if you're playing a, a game. And you're not streaming and you're not recording anything. Do oh, you look still, up at the camera. Like Absolutely. if something happens 100%. in a game, you still look up because yeah. I yeah. I have a I do that, that even when like I'm in a Discord call. Uh, oh yeah. And hey. like if it's for like the Patreon gaming night, patreoncom streams <laughs> or like D and D or something, mm-hmm. I will like as if I was looking at you right now and making mm-hmm. a joke. I would do the same thing. I would just be just like. like Proud look at the camera, and I realize that the camera's not rolling. No yeah. one can see this. Not <laughs> this is not stream. What are you doing? It's just a habit. Like yeah. when I play games now. I will talk sometimes mm. as I'm doing it. I have found, we'll get in the episode in a minute. I have found <laughs> totally that I talk to myself more now. Yeah. Like, and I will, before I do a video, before I do something on YouTube or something, I will, if especially if it's a new project or something that I haven't done before, mm-hmm. I will talk the, like, I will do a test run of the video by myself. Really? Like just, just in the like living out loud? room or whatever. You just talk through the entire thing. Before you get Yeah. Like, I don't know what, I don't know what it is. Like but the equivalent like of out, like having hopefully. a script. Kind I of. guess, yeah, just have a touch points. So you you have works, an idea. Yeah, kind of you have an idea, yeah. an outline of where you want to go with it. That makes sense, though. That makes sense. All right. I guess okay. we can do the podcast. That <laughs> hey, oh, hey, do. wait. This is a podcast. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Liddy. Dorm. We just, uh, we just wined and dined. We did. We ate delicious food that Dorm made. Wine, and, wine being Dr. Pepper this time. Yeah, we did. We just uh, yeah. Drank straight up Dr. Pepper. Yeah. The best, the drink of What kings. was the song? What? Wouldn't you want to be a pepper too, right? Wasn't that the ad campaign oh, in like know. the 70s? Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. It's like, uh, wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? It's like, I'm a pepper, he's a pepper, she's a pepper, oh. we're all peppers. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? Did this come out 20 years before I was born? Probably. Probably, yeah, most likely. But I know it for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, we had some, and I'm going to read it as I mistyped it earlier. Okay. Also, yes, I typed this in advance of the meal we had. Anyway, uh, some wonderful... Wonderful. Yes. W W N M. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Uh, steaks accompanied by uh, wonderful regularly. Uh, golden <laughs> potatoes. Yeah, they were really good too. Thank you. What's that? Today's secret ingredient. <laughs> it's like the secret <laughs> word in Pee Wee Herman is potatoes. Is this, That's right. Is we're this doing chopped. A, you just rip the basket yeah, open the, and there's golden up, potatoes under the cloche. Yeah. Is uh, no, it's um, Iron Chef America. Oh, and yeah, yeah, A la yeah. cuisine. A I love that. Cuisine. I love that guy. I guess great. Oh anyway, uh, today's sources include Wikipedia, obviously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Potatogoodness.com. What? There's, what? That's a real website. Uh, okay. Smithsonian Magazine, VegetableFacts.org, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, History Channel, among others. Can you imagine... Listen, let's yeah. say you work for VegetableFacts.org. Just <laughs> yeah. real quick. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're there. You're uh, there's their senior... Their editor-in-chief. They're, their editor-in-chief, who also happens to be the... Um, founder of the website yes, and, and also, also the only member yeah. um <laughs> the marketing team <laughs> imagine imagine that you're just like trolling looking around the internet like trying uh-huh. to find stuff and you see that there's an ep- there's a podcast episode about potatoes and you're like oh, oh shit. and you go and they're credited yeah in the how you're welcome dave how, how happy no that guy's name is cindy that guy's name is Cindy. No, well, just that person's name. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm definitely imagining it's a dude, and his name is definitely, like, Merv. <laughs> Merv? <laughs> yeah. Not one you hear a lot. <laughs> Merv. His name is definitely It's got to be Merv. someone who farms, I would think. Oh. Like, it, it ha- like, I imagine it would have to, because I'm going to be honest, I didn't explore the website. I, was, I just looked at their potato articles. I was, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> just looked at their potato. I was going to say Jebediah, but that's more, like, Amish, no, and I don't, yeah, think I don't think they're, I don't the think internet they use the much. internet, yeah. They have those fancy uh, magic fireplaces, though. They do. You know those? Yeah, I What's do. What's that? Witchcraft. Okay. <laughs> well, That's what I thought. Anyway, tell me about potatoes, is. please. Thank you. 
<laughs> money is the root of all evil. Oh, boy. And yet, it is such a useful root that we cannot get on without it any more than we can without potatoes. <laughs> Louisa May Alcott. What? 1882. I thought this was a Dormer Ridge. No, this was a, I'm, I started with a quote. Like, I'm a terrible journalist. I I'm like, oh, quotes are cool. <laughs> no, you would have started with... Merriam-Webster defines potato <laughs> as... <laughs> Uh, among many edible crops that emerged at the dawn of modern human civilization, well, <laughs> and managed to spread across an, uh, the entire world, few managed to distinguish themselves by their ruggedness, storage quality, and nutritional value. Potato, the indigenous flowering plant of South America in the Andes Mountains, modern-day southern Peru and northwestern Bolivia, managed to prove its usefulness to our ancestors who cultivated it, nurtured it, and it's, uh, ensured its survival during the last 10,000 years of our history. Centuries after they were introduced to Europe and North America, potatoes represent one of the most important parts of the world's cuisine and the fourth largest food crop in the entire world. Oh, wow. Following corn, rice, and wheat. Oh. Which makes sense because they can all be used in a bunch of different ways, and, like yeah. flour and mm -hmm. corn starchy, syrup and, and things like that. Stuff like that. Today, extensive research and the centuries of selective breeding, we now have access to over a thousand types, different types of potatoes that are grown all around the world. The potato is a starchy, tuberous crop. Tuberous. You'll hear it called a tuber a lot. Tuberous. Uh, from the perennial nightshade Solanum tuber tuberosum. Ooh, nightshade. Yeah. In many contexts, potato refers to the edible tuber, but it can also refer to the plant itself. Commoner slang terms include tater, <laughs> taddy. Taddy. That's from Wikipedia. I never heard it. Okay. And spud. Oh, yes. Yeah, sp oh, yes. Yeah, spud. Oh. That's cute. It's just you're, cute. It's you're like, very it's just like charmed a, it's by like the a, word spud. It's like a cute thing to call it. Like potato and then spud. Like it's just like friendly. <laughs> I mean, you're going to eat it. It's you want like it to be happy. friendly? Yeah. It's going to taste better if it's friendly. Well. That's a pretty sweet potato. <laughs> All right. Sweet potato is actually, well, we'll get there. Uh, <laughs> the English word potato comes from the Spanish patata. Patata. Uh, the Spanish Royal Academy says the Spanish word is a hybrid of the taino batata, sweet potato, and the uh, quichua, quechua, they don't use use, so, oh. or they don't say the U with Q-U, so I guess quechua, uh, papa, Ooh. so, which actually just means potato. So th this certain region of, of Spanish speaking language called it a papa, okay. another language called a sweet potato, a batata, so it sort of just morphed into patata and then potato. So, because aren't french fries like... Papa Fritas? Yes, Papa Fritas. Papa Papas Fritas? The name of uh, originally refers to the sweet potato, although the two plants are not closely related. They're oh. actually different genuses entirely. Uh, the 16th century English herbalist John Gerard referred to sweet potatoes as common potatoes and used the term bastard potatoes and oh. Virginia potatoes oh for the goodness. species we now know as a potato. Wow. Bastard potatoes. That's some strong words for a potato. Yeah, well... People didn't like potatoes for a while. Wow. In many of the chronicles detailing agriculture and plants, no distinction is made between the two. Potatoes are occasionally referred to as Irish potatoes or white potatoes in the United States to distinguish them from sweet potatoes. I've never heard them called Irish potatoes in my life. I've never heard them called Irish potatoes. I've always heard of a, like a white or a yellow. Yeah, in I've the same heard of the way, color. Yeah, in the same way you say a white or a yellow onion. Yeah, we had, like, a yellow, we had yellow potatoes. Too. Yeah. Or like red golden, potatoes. Golden, golden, yeah. yeah. Oh, the little red potatoes with like a little crispy skin on them. Mm. They're so delicious. The name spud for a small potato comes from the <laughs> digging of soil or a hole. <laughs> Thanks. Prior to the planting of potatoes. So I, the method of just like digging the little thing, that was called a spud. And okay. so it just kind so of. So it just came, became the name. Yeah. Is it true that you can cut part of a potato and plant it and, plant yeah. it and it'll grow a potato? Mm -hmm. That's some kind of sci-fi backwards <laughs> nonsense. Why? I because mean, I can't cut a part of a person off and put it in the ground and grow a new well, person. because no, that's a that's an animal it's different so you can do it with like an apple you do it with a starfish starfish leg falls off and grows a brand new starfish does it if you put it in the soil <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's how that, that's how starfish are born <laughs> about 250 million years ago the world consisted of a single giant landmass now known as pangea yeah geological forces broke pangea apart creating the continents and hemispheres familiar today over the eons, the separate corners of the Earth developed wildly different suites of plants and animals. Columbus's voyages re-knit the seams of Pangaea, which is an Alfred Crosby line, uh, mm. the historian who first described the process. In what Crosby called the Columbian Exchange, the world's long separate ecosystems abruptly collided and mixed in a biological bedlam that underlies much of the history we learn in school. Hmm. The potato flower is in Louis the 16th. <laughs> buttonhole, a species that had crossed the Atlantic from Peru, was both an emblem of Colum and Columbia change and one of the most important aspects. So he wore uh, like a like a little like the flower from the potato plant. I didn't know they had flowers. Yeah, they just flower like a little bit, like weeds, kind of. I think. 
Um, he wore that like in his buttonhole in his shirt, and that became like a, a big thing. That was huh. Yeah. He just found a flower he thought was pretty. I'm gonna look up a potato plant flower. Compared with the grains, tubers are inherently more productive. If the head of a wheat or rice plant grows too big, the plant will fall over with fatal results. Growing underground, tubers are not limited by the rest of the plant. In 2008, a Lebanese farmer dug up a potato that weighed nearly 25 pounds. Oh my gosh. It was bigger than his head. Oh my goodness. Oh, they're okay. They're pretty. They're like a little white. Let me see. They're, here, let me. They're like little white They're flowers. Yeah, it's They're, they're pretty special. cute. Okay. They're like little weed flowers. Yeah, they, they, I mean, like they don't... Little... They don't really look. Spuds. Oh wait, well, there's this flower. No, that's not. That's like a tulip, or something <laughs> crazy. Anyway, you're now listening to Liddy look at flowers. <laughs> this is just a podcast where I Google image search something and then describe Explain it to it you. Explain it to you. Yeah. <laughs> the potato. Well, the potato was carried on to Italy and England about 1585. Uh, and Belgium and Germany in 1587, to Austria about 1588, and to France around 1600. Wherever the potato was introduced, it was considered weird, poisonous, and downright evil. Oh, no. In France and elsewhere, the potato was accused of causing not only leprosy... What? But also syphilis, narcosis, scrofula. What? Don't know what that is. I, that was not my sentence. Early death, sterility, and rampant sexuality. So... so well, okay. The, ramp, the rampant sexuality might have something to do with the fact that an STD was also mm. blamed for potato because they didn't say syphilis yeah potatoes don't make you horny i mean like what if unless you're shoving a potato up your well, self like i don't understand how it's causing and it. of destroying the soil where it grew i was trying to talk over whatever you're doing but <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna keep going sorry. they did the mash well there was so much opposition to the potato that an edict was made in the town of besson besson Be- france Besson-Yon. stating in a view of the fact that the potato is a pernicious substance whose use can cause leprosy, it is here, hereby forbidden, uh, under pain of fine, to cultivate it. What? So it's illegal to grow it in certain parts of France. Because they were smoking it. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's what was, what was the problem. They weren't eating it. They were just smoking oh, it. Oh, the pot. They potato. were getting baked. I like that you leaned away from the mic to do Sorry. that joke. Baked. It go. was mostly to you. Yeah. Like, I get that this is, like, a podcast, and, like, I get that... <laughs> that was for me. I get that, that was my little take that joke was for you, because you're the only person that's going to hear it, and then immediately hate me because of it, yeah, so... You, don't have to, you have to wait for other people to hate I you. I have to see you physically... <laughs> I, in real time, I have to... I get to see the hate yeah. on your face. <laughs> I have to just wait and... Dorm Streams 2019, see the hate. I see the hate. I just have to wait for it to, to come through for somebody else. Sir Walter Raleigh... British explorer and historian known for his expeditions of the Americas. Cool dude. That's where we are. Cool dude, TM. Yeah, you like Walt Raleigh? No, he said it. He oh, te- he, he TM'd te- it. He deemed himself yeah, the cool dude. He just wanted to tack it onto the end there of like world explorer and adventurer, cool guy. Cool dude. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Uh, first brought the potato to Ireland and, sorry, and planted them at his Irish estate. <laughs> Did you do an accent? Is that what that was? Yeah. Just for the word Ireland. Ireland. <laughs> Ireland. 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 Like there's like an Ireland. O in front of Ireland when Irish people say it. Ireland. 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 That was oh. better. Ireland. <laughs> oh, that was good. That was Thank good. You. I think based on what I've heard from movies and TV shows, that sounds Irish. And Becky Lynch that we listened to. Oh yeah, to and Becky Lynch. Yeah. Uh, my Irish accent, really quick. And my Irish accent <laughs> is always just real quick. Is <laughs> always just curse words. <gasps> oh shoot! So it's like ah, you fucking like that like i only know how to curse in irish accents i don't know why i don't know where that comes from but anyway. that's interesting all right uh something new i learned about you uh yeah he put in his irish estate i didn't mean to do it that time <laughs> at um myrtle grove not myrtle beach yoke hall near cork ireland cork ireland is great legend has it that he made a gift of the potato plant to queen elizabeth and the local gentry was were invited to a royal banquet featuring the potato in every course Unfortunately, the cooks were uneducated in the matter of potatoes, tossed out the lumpy-looking tubers, and brought to the royal table a dish of boiled stems and leaves. No! Which are poisonous. Oh, my God. Which promptly made everyone deathly ill. Oh, my God. The potatoes were then banned. (laughs) So that's why they thought they were poisonous? Yeah, people weren't eating the tube. They were just eating the stem. Oh, what a bunch of dumb idiots. I mean, to their credit... That works with a lot of things, like yeah. onions. Like you could just yeah. eat the onion stem. I, I guess like that's a good point because like who looks at a potato and goes, "Man, I can't wait to sink that brown thing." I can't wait to sink my teeth into that. You know, like yeah. you don't you don't look at that and think. Do you eat raw potatoes? 
I do sometimes, yeah, when I'm cooking them. Okay, especially. so some of my friends think that's the weirdest thing in the world. Cause I don't know, my you mom's, like salt it. Yeah, if mom is making mashed potatoes, if I go home, she's making mashed potatoes, she's like, here, I, I cut you up a raw potato, do you want some? So many people are like, you're going to get worms. I'm like, do you know what, no. wor- you know what worms are? That's not where they come from. <laughs> yeah, no. They're, they living in the, they're living in the Victorian times, when or the princess times. Who was yes. it? Yeah. Queen Elizabeth? Elizabeth. The Elizabethan queen. Elizabethan times. The queen times, when they thought they the were The queen present. times the queen's time uh in 1719 potatoes had been ba- uh, had been introduced to the united states several times throughout the 1600s they were not widely grown for almost a century until 1719 Ooh. when they were planted in londonderry new hampshire by scotch irish immigrants and from there spread across the nation it's it's a, a worldwide food yes like it's correct. it is a really huh potatoes are i looked at a because li- i was going to do <laughs> originally was going to do what we did for the um, Peanuts episode, mm-hmm. where I just listed the entire recipes <laughs> of just, like, everywhere to prepare a potato, but it was far too long. Because oh. literally every culture has, like, five potato dishes that's that really, they have. That's so. really cool. To be able to take one ingredient and turn it into a bunch of different cultural dishes yeah. is a really neat thing. Um, Antoine, Aug- uh, Antoine <laughs> Augustine Parmentier, 1737-1813. Uh, a French military chemist and bot- botanist won a contest sponsored by the Academy of Bessignon, same place earlier, Okay. Uh, to find a food capable of reducing calamities of famine. That's how they oh. pitched the uh, contest. With a study of the potato called The Chemical Examination of the Potato, which oh uh, is also a biography about me. <laughs> According to a historical account, he was taken prisoner five times by the Prussians during the Seven Years' War uh, and obliged to survive on a diet of potatoes. He also served oh. dinner... Uh, dinners at which all course were made for buying potatoes. Do you think he just showed up one day and he's like, and here is a raw potato for your first course, and here's a raw potato but a little cut up. You know, like <laughs> yeah. each time he's just like, he has no other way to cook it. Have you seen, well, I wasn't going to say have you seen it all. I don't know where my brain was going. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, just the idea of going to someone's house and every dish being potato. Yeah. Not like potato is a side dish. But like featured. Potato is the only dish you're eating. Yeah. That would be the most filling and miserable meal. Can you name five ways off the top of your head you can pr- prepare a potato? Uh, baked, mashed, boiled, uh, like French fry, like fried. Fried, okay. Uh, grilled potatoes. Do, do, are grilled uh, potatoes a thing? Yeah, you can put them on grill. Oh. Or just like... Uh, like roasted potatoes. I this guess, is gonna this is gonna be like a Bubba Gump kind of like <laughs> boil. Yeah, you can you fix potatoes. Pretty mash well, them, right? boil them. You know, like yeah. garlic potatoes, scallop potatoes, <laughs> pineapple shrimp. <laughs> I lost my plate. There it is. Uh, he uh, he also served dinners at which all courses were potatoes. Many French potato dishes now bear his name today. So he's kind of the patron saint of potatoes, if you will. All gratin. Well, that's what they call him. The old, the old, the old great one. Yeah, I don't know what gratin means. That sound, you, be- I believed it. Okay, you well, convinced me. I, yeah, just kidding. That's what it means. Parmentier persuaded uh, Louis the Sixteenth, King of France, to encourage cultivation of potatoes. The king let him plant one hundred useless acres uh, outside of Paris, France. They just weren't using it for anything. So sure, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, in potatoes with troops keeping the field heavily guarded. <laughs> this aroused public curiosity, Uh-oh. and the people decided that anything so carefully guarded must be valuable. One night, Parmentier allowed the guards to go off duty, and the local farmers, um, as he had hoped, went into the field, confiscated the potatoes, and planted them then on their own farms. Oh my gosh. So, so he tricked people into yes. planting more potatoes. It's genius. That's really smart. From the small start, the habit of growing and eating potatoes spread. It is said that Marie Antoinette, uh, Queen of France, and married to Louis XVI, often pinned potato flowers in her curls. Because of her, ladies of the era wore potato blossoms in their hair. That is so weird to think that a potato flower was yeah. used by the monarchy yeah. as a symbol of, like, some kind of fortune or beauty. Yeah, something so lowly and universal. And, and now what somebody says, if they think that they're ugly, they call themselves a, a potato. potato. Right. So that's... That's a good point. That's kind of... That's a, actually a good retort if someone's like, oh, I'm just a potato. It'd be like, do you know Marie Antoinette wore potato flowers? Yeah. Like, no, you're not. You're a potato flower. Oh. Yeah. That's very good. There you go, gents and ladies. And she doesn't have a head anymore, so she was... Yeah. You know... <laughs> She loved cake, though. That's what I hear. <laughs> she's, not, big, she's not alive anymore. Big fan way. of cake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it is it is notable that she doesn't have a head. Like, I mean, yeah. If you look down a list of descriptors of Marie, like if we were playing charades, right? And I said, and I, I would had just the pretend to take my head off. Or yeah, not charades. What is the, word, the game I'm thinking of? Where I just give you clues about. <laughs> oh, uh, like the pyramid, like game? catchphrase kind of thing. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, or like, what was the one game taboo? Right? Oh you yeah, taboo, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but if I had Marie Antoinette as a card, mm-hmm. I was trying to get you to guess it. You just say at headless. At one point, I would say headless. You would probably just say headless. Headless cake eater. Yeah, headless. <laughs> That's a good three word Headless clue. French woman. Honestly, if, you, if I gave you headless cake eater, would you get, would you get it? I would probably. <laughs> headless would, French cake eater. I would probably that would get you there, for stare sure. at you for a moment and question my decisions in life. So a normal of, Tuesday. This is normal Tuesday. You know, I read that she didn't say let them eat cake. That well, it that was like, my whole bit. That it was, well, I didn't want to tell, whole I bit. Didn't want to tell you that it was like misconstrued, like what she had said. I don't know. She All probably said it. She, she probably said it or something similar or something worse. What is the movie quote that ever? Oh, um, are you feeling lucky, punk? He never oh, yeah. actually said that. He was like, are you feeling lucky? And then like, I almost did it. And then later he was like, well, are you punk? Yeah. And so he never says those. There's a lot of those like where they get kind of. And, mishmash together and you like me you really like me the speech yeah uh, did she not say that so she said something similar ah but but it gets kind of like smushed together yeah, in yeah. the in the public consciousness i guess uh can't find my place again oh in the early 1800s potato became a commonplace crop that's a fun thing to say that was used in entire in the entirety of europe but such popularity became severely tested between severely rather tested between 1845 and 1849 when disease destroyed the entire potato production of ireland during this great starvation or the irish potato famine as a lot of people refer to it around one million people died from starvation and forced large amounts of people to immigrate out of ireland Five hundred thousand left for north america and australia weirdly enough was this this was during the time of jonathan swift's uh modest proposal right when he suggested everybody eat babies instead i've never heard of this oh really i think it's jonathan swift it was satire and because people Uh. couldn't eat he said uh we should just eat babies instead that's, that's cool and it was it was called a modest proposal that's which very I was good great. uh i just always think of um is far and away the name of the movie with tom cruise and nicole kidman where oh, they're I in don't... ireland oh i don't know and spoiler alert he comes back to life at the end of it uh, what i think it's called far and away of course he comes back to life it's a tom cruise it's really strange though because they're like irish or he might be irish and she's english i don't remember he has a terrible irish accent um, but they're on a boat together and eventually like he dies, but then the end of the movie like is zoom like it's a very quick zoom into his face and he breathes in. What? Like at the end he's just like <gasps> like that kind of thing and the movie ends. What was the what's the, what's the setup? Like are I have they no idea. I don't remember. What we watched it in history class. I don't remember. Oh, the, anything far but and that away? he come I think that's the name of the movie. I, I wanna say that's right. It was in that period of time where they were doing like every movie together because they didn't oh, eyes I was shut. Watch- oh, that yeah. was weird. Fucking Kubrick. Uh yeah. Far and away. Is he Irish? He's Irish in it, right? Um, I'm pretty sure he is. E- yes. Travel from Ireland to America in hopes of claiming free land in Oklahoma. Oh, that's right. They go to Oklahoma. Oh, that's right. Because that's what we're talking about in history. It was all about people, the great land rush of Oklahoma. So that's how we ended up watching that, I think. Anyway. Interesting. Um, the United States of America was the last major country who adopted potato in their cuisine, as in early cases, the United States of America often was. Uh, for many years, they regarded this crop for horses and other animals. Hmm. Only after the 1872 efforts of famous horticulturist Luther Burbank, uh, American potato industry managed to gain some traction. This was enabled by Burbank's discovery of disease-resistant potato hybrid, and another hybrid that was used in Ireland to help combat blight epidemic. Blight was a big deal. Blight, at one yeah. Point. Uh, the plants were from Ireland, so the crop became known as the Irish potato. Oh. The potatoes were planted in Idaho as early as 1838. By 1900, the state's production exceeded a million bushels, about 27,000 tons. Bushels of taters. Yes. Before 1910, the crops were stored in barns or root cellars, but by the 1920s, also root cellars, a very funny term. <laughs> uh, did you ever, have you ever heard the term like on a root? Do you on know what that route? is? No. Oh, okay. That's like an old country saying for like riding a penis. What? Like she's on the root. Uh, you never heard that? Okay. What? I swear that's a thing. On the root? Or on a root, yeah. Like on his root. Who says that? Oh, old country people. Like. People in my high school said it. What? what? I, I swear that's a thing. It's I supposed to be you. in the act? As like, it's happening? Could she come to the door right now? No, she's on the route. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, kind of. But I don't think it's like in the act. It was like, oh, she was on a route. You know what I mean? <laughs> Why wouldn't you just say she was having sex? Yeah, well, you know, fucking it, sayings are weird. Oh, yeah, it is. That's weird. Uh, before 1910, uh, or oh, I already said that because of root cellar. <laughs> <laughs> By the 1920s, potato cellars or barns came into use. U.S. Pro- uh, potato production. Potato production. Potato production. <laughs> potato production. Potato production. <laughs> has increased steadily. Two thirds of the crop come from Idaho, Washington, Oregon, Colorado, and Maine. 
Hmm. Maine was a weird one. I, yeah, I didn't think, I would think it'd be too cold. And potato grower, growers, I said growers, <laughs> have strengthened their position in both domestic and foreign markets. Hmm. There are close to 4,000 varieties of potato. What? Including common commercial varieties, each of which has specific agricultural or culinary attributes. Around 80 varieties are commercially available in the UK. In general, varieties are categorized into a few main groups based on common characteristics, such as russet potatoes, which are what you would think of as a normal potato in my mind, rough brown skin, red potatoes, white potatoes, yellow potatoes, also called Yukon potatoes, and uh, purple potatoes. Have you ever had a purple potato? I, yeah, I, so I've... They're, they're weird. They like are a, very like, strange. Like a purple food... Yeah, like, like cooked, purple cauliflower too. Yeah, yeah, like a cooked purple food is weird. Like a like grapes are different, but a purple cooked food is just like that's just a bizarre thing to me. I don't it know is. why. They they mm. like to both with cauliflower and because these are the only other than like red onions, but I don't really consider that. Yeah, like pop, purple cauliflower and purple potatoes are often like mashed or pureed. Like, yeah, because they look really wild because it's like just this purple substance. What is yeah. this? Um. But yeah, I've never eaten a purple potato. I don't like purple foods, I don't think. I don't like call or um <laughs> I don't like purple. <laughs> I don't like uh cabbage. Oh, I didn't think of cabbage, you're right. I don't like cabbage. I Ugh. like cabbage. Cabbage is fine. Ugh. No. And coleslaw maybe, because it's yeah. got like it's got fatty bad things for you. Never had like uh like boiled cabbage and carrots? No. Like you're from the freaking eighteen hundreds? No. It's good. It's good. I pull I like I pull it out, you know those bag salads you get that's got mm-hmm. like all the mixed stuff in it and they've yeah. always got the huge chunks of the purple cabbage because sure. it's probably the cheapest freaking thing that you can of course, put in nobody there. Buys it. Uh I pull those big chunks out and toss them in the garbage. Come at me. Wow. Yeah. Re- I'm a kids. renegade. <laughs> I'm a re- yeah, they wouldn't want it either. That's true. <laughs> Probably not true. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> For culinary purposes, varieties are often differentiated by their waxiness. Oh. Waxiness. Of the, ugh, I don't like that. Of the skin? Uh, yeah. And of just the potato itself, I think. Oh. Flowery or mealy baking potatoes have more starch than waxy boiling potatoes. Oh. Um, the distinction may also arise from variation in the comparative ratio of two different potato starch compounds, amylose and amylopectin. Interesting. Uh, amylose along, or amylopectin, sorry, no either. Amylose, a long chain molecule, diffuses from the starch granule when cooked into water and lends itself to dishes where the potato is mashed. Varieties that contain a slightly higher amylopectin content, uh, which is a highly branched molecule, help the potato retain its shape after being boiled in water. Potatoes that are good for making potato chips or potato crisps are sometimes called chipping potatoes. Oh. Which means they, they are... a different type? I guess so. Which means they meet the basic requirements of similar varietal... Varietal. That's a weird word. Characteristics yeah. being firm, fairly clean, and fairly well-shaped. Fairly clean? So it's like... I think it's the middle ground, right? Oh. Because like russet potatoes are ugly. Like yeah. they're just kind of bumpy yeah. and weird. I think that's what they mean by clean, where it's like oh, okay. cleanly shaped, but they still have some of the qualities of a russet. Have you ever cooked or had cooked for you... Like, basically just boil potatoes, like, cut up potatoes and boil them. Yeah. And then drain the water and put butter in it. Yeah. And just eat it like that. Yeah, mommy sells them. So, depending on the type of potato you have, it would be, sometimes they'd be kind of gritty. Yeah. And I wonder if that's the ones that are supposed to be more mashed potatoes. Maybe. Rather than, like, because, I mean, we would just buy whatever was on sale. Sure, yeah. So, like, we didn't take into account what kind of potato it was because we didn't know right, or yeah. care. It's just a potato. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a potato. Yeah. And it, it all eats the same way, as far as we're concerned. It all <laughs> eats the same way. <laughs> the European Cultivated Potato Database. Okay, yeah. the ECPD for short. I'm on board. Is an online collaborative database of potato variety descriptions that is updated and maintained by the Scottish Agricultural Science Agency, SASA. <laughs> within the framework of the european cooperative program spelled p-r-o-g-r-a-m-m-e because they're fancy uh one dude's in control of putting all this <laughs> potato information into the computer yeah, he, they, they he, comes down the line he they calls go, himself the ceo of each of these companies yeah. too or each of these i guess head researcher I don't know which every time it comes down they're like all right fred we got you another one here you go bud and he's like yes more potato news more for the european cultivated potato database yes, i can't wait i like to imagine it as uh potato imdb Oh my god! Which is basically what it is. And they're just photos of them from different angles, <laughs> from different ages, and yeah, different ages. They're little spud, and then different like recipes a grown they've one. appeared in. And then when they when they get all gross, and they start growing eyes on them, and they start getting like <laughs> soggy and stuff. Yeah, and all throughout their lives. All oh, I like it. The European Cooperative, uh, within the framework of the Euro- I didn't finish the name of the company or the. What do you call it? A company? I guess research facility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the framework of the European Cooperative Program for Crop Genetic Resources Network. That's the whole name. The name of the whole thing. You would die before, like, if somebody, if you had to call nine one one and tell them where you were, and somebody was choking to death, they'd die before you got the word, <laughs> the, the whole name out. 
which is run by the International Plant Genetic Resources Institute. So I'm going to give you the full breakdown here. Oh my god, okay. The European Cultivated Potato Database is managed by the Scottish Agricultural Science Agency within the European Cooperative Program for Crop Genetic Resource Networks run by the International Plant Genetic Resources Institute. And I'm dead. (laughs) All this for (laughs) potatoes. To say, this one's brown. Could you, okay, but listen, this was made by a bunch of nerds who were like, god, we all we do is talk about potatoes, but how are we going to pick up chicks like let's make it sound awesome and And so and then they and then by the time that they get all the words out the girls are like whatever okay sure yes i'll go yeah i'll go to dinner with you fine whatever just stop talking it's like can we have potatoes no no of course not. brad no a raw potato is 79 79 percent water oh 17 percent carbs two percent protein and contains negligible fat i didn't know i had protein i didn't either I know they're a little starchy. In an amount measuring 100 grams, raw potato provides 322 kilojoules of energy. Whoa. And is a rich source of vitamin B6 and C, with no other vitamins or minerals in significant amount. <laughs> that's literally all that, you get. Is that why you can make a light or a battery out of a potato? I think that's because of the... Is it something maybe? to do with the acids in it or something? Yeah, I think it's something, to, yeah. Oh, that's weird. Uh, the potato is rarely eaten raw because raw potato, well, because raw potato starch is poorly des- uh, digested by humans. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> when a potato is baked, its contents of vitamin B6 and vitamin C decline notably, while there is little significant change to the amount of other nutrients. So basically, if so you bake lose, a potato, you lose losing, all the vitamins. It's, yeah, you defeat You're just the eating purpose. Carb. But you can't eat them. Okay, this is a catch-22. Uh-huh. You can't eat it when it's raw because your body's not able to digest it. You can't eat it when it's baked because you lose all the important ingredients, all, all the important stuff that you care about. So what do you do? Half-bake it? That's a ridiculous Sounds plan. like a half-baked idea. That's a half-baked idea. It's a ridiculous plan. Just point with my water bottle like just, I was a gym teacher. Just eat it raw like a grown-up. <laughs> Grow like, up. <laughs> eat potatoes Grow raw. up and Grow eat up. a... Grow up. Stop cooking your potatoes. <laughs> Grow up and eat a raw potato like a real man. <laughs> <laughs> or a poor lower class, you know, family like myself. Potatoes are often broadly <laughs> classified as having a high glycemic index. Oh. Uh, G.I. Joe, that's what that stands for. <laughs> and so are often uh, excluded from diets of individuals trying to follow a low G.I. diet. Yeah, the diabetics aren't mm. supposed to, because they say that like one large potato is like a half cup of sugar or a quarter cup of sugar or something. It's Jeez. got like a ton of sugar in it. The G.I. potatoes can vary considerably depending on the cultivar or cultivar category. Huh. I don't know what cultivar I don't, one I, I don't know what that is. It's a category. Uh, such as <laughs> oh, red, but... russet, white, or King Edward. Oh. King Edward. King Edward pota- a potato was got the name King Edward. Yeah, the best potato in all the land. A little crown, a little crown on his head. I'm just got real hype about it. King <laughs> Edward. I just got real excited I, I about it. I thought you were gonna it. make a Mr. Potato Head joke, but you never got there. Ah, oh, frick. <laughs> That's why, so That's why I waited. That's why I waited. You keep looking at me and I'm like, he's expecting like, something. Go- is, he, is, is she going there? Is he's she like, going? He's expecting oh. something you expect. <laughs> you have, your standards for my jokes are too high. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can change by growing growing conditions and storage, preparation methods, etc. Gotcha. Uh, and accompanying foods consumed can also play a, fac- uh, play a factor. In particular, consuming reheated or cooled potatoes that were previously cooked may lower the GI effect. Whoa. Interesting. So reheating them? Or I guess you eventually them? cook it out slowly, so you would, the first time you cook it, and then you would kind of semi-cook it again. Huh. Potatoes are also used for purposes other than eating for humans, by exam- or for example. Oh, sorry, I missed a uh, category really quick. Or a uh, paragraph. My bad. In the UK, potatoes are not considered by the National Health Service as counting or contributing toward the recommended daily five portions of fruits and vegetables. Hmm. Just so you know. So potatoes really aren't healthy for you, really. Yeah. But they're great, so who cares? Yeah. I mean... You should care, but... You, yeah, you should care, but also, you know, PSA. Potatoes are also used for purposes other than eating for he- eating by humans, for example. <laughs> Not eating for humans. <laughs> potatoes are used to brew alcoholic beverages, beverages rather, such as vodka, mm-hmm. uh, poitine, or aquavit. Didn't know what either of those were. Okay. They're also used as fodder for livestock. Livestock grade potra- potatoes considered too small and or blemished to sell to market for human use, best or human use, but suitable for fodder use, have been called chats in some dialects. Chats? So your Twitch chat is just yeah, a big hey, potato. Yeah, hey, hey, chat, you're just a dirty old ugly potato nobody else wanted. But Got him. <laughs> but I guess that makes me the pig that's going to eat you. Aww. Aww. It's negative all the way around. <sighs> Aww. <laughs> they may be stored in bins until use. They are sometimes in sealed. Uh, oh, interesting. 
Some farmers prefer to steam them rather than feed them raw and are equipped to uh, equipped to do so efficiently. So they just like big pots. That's really cute because you imagine it's just like, come on, everybody, come get your steam taters. Yeah. It's like you're cooking it for your animals. Aww. Potato starch is used in the food industry as a thickener and binder for soups and sauces, in the textile industry as an adhesive. Wow. And for manufacturers of papers and boards. So yeah, you can use you can make paper out of potato starch. Interesting. Uh, okay. I've done that before. Oh. Um. The pulp. Yes. Maine companies are explored. Uh, Maine is in the state. Companies are exploring the possibilities of using waste potatoes to obtain polyactic acid for use in plastic products. Other researchers project uh, projects seek ways to use the starch as a base for biodegradable packaging. Oh, neat! Packaging. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Potato skins, along with honey, are a folk remedy for burns in India. I okay. So I've heard this that they'll just like, lay the skin. They'll just lay the skin on it. Huh? It's re- yeah. I don't know. I don't understand. Cause they said something about it pulling out the heat. Which is what they've always, that I've always heard older people say, pulling out the heat. It's not mm. a, I don't think that's a thing. Burn centers in India have experimented with the use of the thin outer skin layer to protect burns while healing. Hmm. Uh, potatoes, mainly russets, are commonly used in plant research. The consistent parenchyma tissue, <laughs> P-A-R-E-N-C-H-Y-M-A, parenchyma, uh, the clonal nature of the plant and the low metab- uh, metabolic activity provide a very nice model tissue for experimentation. Wound response studies are often done on potato tuber tissue as are electron transport experiments. In this respect, potato tuber tissue is similar to Drosophila meling- melangaster, <laughs> Caniorhabdus elegans, <laughs> and Escherichia coli. They are standard research organisms. The last one being E. coli, by the way. I don't know why that got me. I just This is like the one episode we have the most like Latin in, and yeah. it's the one about potatoes, and that just got me. And lastly, mm. to end on a uh, note. <laughs> on, on a note. Potatoes have been delivered with personalized messages as a novelty. Do you remember this trend? No. Potato delivery services include potato parcel and mail a spud. Do you, you can, not remember this? No, you can mail the People pota- would put a mailing address and a stamp on a potato. On a potato? And you can mail anything as long as it has a stamp and a, a mailing address. Oh my god. So it, it would get put through the freaking postal service and people would like write things on them and like hope you're having a nice day or whatever. And they would just send a and, potato. Yeah, they send it for like five bucks or whatever how much the char- or the thing charges. Let's just send everybody a potato. Just Yeah, new sub tier. No, you get sent a potato. <gasps> spud tier! Uh, it's... <laughs> a new spud tier! Yeah, that was close. <laughs> A new spud tier. You get a spud. Do you have any good potato stories? Good potato stories. Whenever I think of potatoes, I always think of uh, Ross from Friends. Okay, why? He went for Halloween as Spudnik one time. Oh, no. So he was the satellite, but as a potato. (laughs) It's a very clever costume. There's a lot of potato-based, like, memes and... Are there? Well, like, calling yourself a potato. Oh, sure, yeah. Or saying that something, like, you used... Uh, you have a bad PC. It's a potato PC or a bad camera. Did you hurt your foot? Yeah, I sat on my foot. Yeah, it fell asleep, didn't it? Uh-huh. Yep. These chairs are terrible for that. Yeah, well, it's just I, I sit on my foot habitually. Yeah, I do too. And if you're not on a couch, mm-hmm. boy, no. howdy. Cuts off that circulation. And there's like this chair is so well made that there's like a steel bar running <laughs> right <laughs> where the seat is. And so I just put my the tip of my ankle right on the steel bar and it's not comfortable. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, potatoes are a thing. <laughs> potatoes are a thing. They're a delicious, tasty thing. I know, like, with the Atkins diet, don't they say, like, to not eat any breads or potatoes? I think that's, like, the main things they say. Mm. No, no, So they're a low-carb diet? Yeah, so, like, no starches, no Is pastas. Atkins still a thing? Do people still do that? I think so. Like, mm. I, I'm pretty sure they still have, like, frozen meals and stuff like that. Hmm. Um, so I think it's still a thing. But didn't that guy die of a heart attack, a heart disease? <laughs> I don't know. You know better than I would. I think he died. Well, he might... Yeah, something related to his a heart thing. Bit. Yeah, I think it was a health-related thing. I feel like keto has kind of taken over everything, mm. and like paleo and stuff. Like, I feel like those are the evolutions of fad diets, where it's like these actually have a, quite a bit of science behind them. Yeah. But the the barrier for entry is different with those, where it's like Atkins, it's like, all right, don't eat these four foods. With keto, it's like, okay, well, you can eat these, but in certain amounts, but then you can't eat these at all. And right. Then, like, I think the barrier for entry with Atkins is just doing it Mm -hmm. with keto i think it's learning it yeah because like you can watch videos about keto and they're like 45 minutes long of like what to avoid what to eat when to eat it it's like jesus that's a lot yeah um so it's interesting to see that fad diets have kind of led way to legitimate nutritional strategies that are a little heady Mm -hmm. and you get why fad diets existed because they're easier right yeah that's that's why they they last one day and they're gone the next because Mm -hmm. 
there's only so many times you can look at a plate of pasta and not eat it. <laughs> That's you know? true. You only have 15 of those in your life. Yeah, you only get 15 plates. Everybody knows this. Everybody gets 15 plates of pasta in their life. And one of those times... You're going to look at it and you're going to eat it. Yeah, that's true. So that's just how, that's just life. <laughs> Could you imagine if you only got 15 plates of pasta in your entire life? You know, I feel like I'd actually be okay with that. Because I don't really? feel like I eat a I lot of pasta, pasta as it is. I, love I feel, pasta. I feel like I, I feel like I, would you say you're an Alfredo? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, no, I because for me pasta is like the go-to i don't really want to cook but i don't want to go out uh, kind of meal because it's just boil water and put a sauce mm-hmm. on it um <laughs> i said it like that put a, put a sauce, sauce on it on, on it. it uh one day the other day this is just off the rails now you said one day the other day <laughs> fuck off uh, i d- i ran out of spaghetti but i had spaghetti sauce uh-huh. it was the day it was really cold yeah it was like yeah, yeah. you know negative three or whatever and uh polar vortex and all that so you just drank the sauce no <laughs> I nearly, I didn't, I didn't, (laughs) I want this to be known, I almost prepared the ramen noodles I had as spaghetti noodles. I honestly don't think that would have been a terrible thing. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if they're made differently, they do have a different texture for sure, but would they have a different taste if prepared the same way? So I Are they made of the same thing? I don't know. I don't know. They're probably just made of- Listen to episode, episode 52 when I talk about noodles. They're just made of plastic. Anyways. Oh, no. Yeah. That's why they swell up like that when you put them in water. (laughs) (laughs) Why they swell up? (laughs) What do you think pasta does when you cook it? I think it swells up because it's made of plastic. (laughs) That's a weird episode. Yeah. This is a good one. This is, yeah, we're both, we're both like kind of slap happy and loopy right now. Yeah. But like, I didn't realize there was 40,000 different kinds of potatoes. 4,000, but yes. I thought you said forty. Pretty sure it was four. Hold on. I Make thought sure you I'm said not a, forty. Because I thought that forty thousand would be a lot. Maybe I, it is forty. 000. I thought you said. I don't I know. You said no, it was four. I may have said forty, but oh. I, it is four. Oh, I thought you said forty because I was very impressed, and now I'm not nearly as impressed as I, I mean, was. Four thousand potato varieties is pretty insane. Yeah, but forty. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you well everybody's an audio listener now for uh for audio there liddy just like dwayne the rock johnson eyebrow raised at me when she said 40 she's like 40 eyebrow raise and it made me laugh so there's that <laughs> so the show is now you me googling things and telling people what they look like yes. and then you telling people the faces that i'm making correct while i'm doing said said descriptions yes because oh there's no goodness. video evidence of it anymore. That's thank true. God. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of work. Uh, but yeah, now you have to describe those moments sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, I feel like that's kind of funny, though, as to, to when we just like randomly start laughing. It's you said kind of funny. Sorry. Oh, you made a face and I was confused. I was naturally excited at hearing kind of funny. Anyway. Anyway. That's it. That's the that's the that's the app. That was really good. I I really did learn a lot about potatoes. Not forty thousand types of potatoes, no, but that four thousand. A lot. That would be a lot. That's why I was like so shocked. Mm. I was like, I'm sorry, what? How you was were the, very impressed by that number. How was there room for any other vegetable if there's forty thousand? <laughs> Wait, okay, so was it actually considered a vegetable? Because yes. it's like a root. It's, it's a, a vegetable. It's a root, right? It doesn't have seeds, so yeah, it's a vegetable. Okay. It's a tuber. Wait, if it has seeds, it's not a vegetable? If it has seeds, it's a fruit. What about a bell pepper? It's a fruit. Peppers are fruits, right? Huh? Aren't they? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Is it- Isn't that the rule that if it has seeds, it's a fruit? No, Am I crazy? It's- I don't know. All right, I'm going to Google. No, Hold on. it's the part of the show where we Google. What about bananas? They don't have seeds, do they? I don't think you have Bana- to. Wait, do bananas have seeds? I, I, don't, know. I don't know. I don't. I honestly I don't. heard that one time. And I honestly don't know. How does a banana get case. started? How do you plant a banana? How do you... Bell peppers are actually fruit, and so are uh, cucumbers, green beans, and red chilies. So what's a potato? I mean, a banana. <laughs> what's a banana? Is it, does it have seeds? Does a banana <laughs> have seeds is the first one, so... Okay. Uh, while bananas have hard, have large hard seeds, but over time, humans can have cultivated bananas to not have seeds. Okay, so... Because, so naturally, they do have seeds. So yes. bananas used to have a different taste. Really? We, yeah. We have genetically like modified them to where mm. they taste like they do now. But they used to have a different flavor. Like more like plantains, probably. May- yeah, maybe. Like they weren't as sweet. I think. That makes like, sense. Like, yeah. yeah. Like plantains. Like, but I think we've we've genetically modified them to the point that they're as sweet as they are. So now. there you go. If it has seeds, because <laughs> banana candy doesn't taste like a banana. No. Like if you have a banana yeah, candy, bana- nothing tastes like a banana. 
Except aside from a banana. Yeah. Like you can't do a, even sometimes if you make it into like a banana Brand. cream pie or a, or a bread or something, you lose some of, like you get a hint of it, but, yeah. but you don't get the full banana taste. I never get the full banana. You never you. get the full banana. You're not on the route. Well, well, Liddy, where can people find you? Twitch.tv slash team Liddy. Where can people find you? Twitch.tv slash Dormstreams. We've also got Twitter. We've got a new merch site, dormstreams.co slash store. Yes, go check out the merch and buy it. Took me two months. Please reward me. Buy the brand new shirt that says I'm a proud little potato. Thanks to Click to Learn More, the show where I learned about potatoes. Oh, I'm not going to design that. <laughs> I was going to do it for a little while, and then you went too long, and now I don't have to. I thought nice. it would be funnier if it was so long. Just a paragraph on a yeah, shirt? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, about potatoes. There are Quick to Learn More shirts, though. Yeah, there are absolutely. Them. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, two. Yeah, I, I picked up... They're, they're the softest shirts, too. Yes, um, they're but, actually softer than our old store. Yeah. They weren't going to speak ill of because they were very nice to us, but... Yeah, Dorm specifically picked the softest possible shirts because I all I do is talk about... Even j pointed this out. He's like, and every time you talk about a shirt, you talk about how soft it is. And mm. I was like, oh, I do. Well, that's me with, like, the Hamid shirts. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, like, the, yeah. one of the main reasons I buy them is because they are so soft. That's a make or break kind of thing, yeah. right? Especially with... I want to be comfortable wearing if, a shirt. It, especially depending on, like, how much you're spending on them. If you're spending right. 20 bucks on a shirt, you don't want it to be scratchy and uncomfortable. Yeah. You want it to be comfortable. I deliberately took a hit to profits i guess but <laughs> it is the most po- it is the most expensive shirt base option gotcha because of how like soft it is basically. yeah it's really nice. but there we go we have a new store anyway, we have twitter yeah. we have instagram mm-hmm. youtube yeah. dorm's got a patreon yes uh um, of our phones is blowing up i'm not I sure i think it's you oh. all kinds of stuff going on right now yeah it's fun time, <laughs> <laughs> fun time. <laughs> did you ever play saints row 3 no. There was a, there was like a bunch of, you know, like in open world games where there's like little side, not side missions, but like little side uh, things you can do. Mm-hmm. One was like, prof- oh, I'm going to butcher the name, but it was like Professor Ginky's Happy Good Luck Fun Time Now or something like that. And it was <laughs> okay. like a Japanese game show where you kill people. Uh-huh. Uh I just thought of that anyway. I hope somebody gets a kick out of that. It just came out it's of a nowhere. great game. Nobody but ever talks that, about Saints Row 3. But did great. that just come out of nowhere? It well, I said I th- it was a fun time, and you laughed at fun time. Oh. So, Professor Ginky's I thought this was going to be potato-related, and I was waiting no, I for wish. the potato-related portion, and I missed it. I potatoed it. What's your favorite way to have a potato prepared? Ooh. Your favorite potato preparation, if you will. Okay, are we saying, like, to cook or just to eat? Oh, do you have a different one? Mm-hmm. For Okay, so what's your favorite to cook? I like cooking mashed potatoes most. Okay. And what's your favorite to eat? Depending on the mood. Okay. Could be mashed potatoes. Depending yeah. on the meal, really. But I also love potato skins, which I know you don't like potato skins, but... I, I, I like potato skins. Oh. Yeah. You used to not like potato skins. What? No, I like what? potato skins. You didn't get potato skins one time. Because, anyway. Oh, potato... Potato skins, the appetizer. I thought you meant yes. the skin on a potato, like a baked no, potato. Like potato skins. Oh, the appetizer. No, I hate. I was those. like, you don't like potato skins, no. but I'm not going to correct you on what you like. No, I don't like those because I yeah, I got food poisoning them. from them once. Right, that's and what I, I ha- thought, but I wasn't going to. Yeah, sorry, I thought you meant just the skin of a potato, like a baked. potato. Oh no, preparation potato skins. Okay, like sorry. if if TGI I, Friday. If I make like make a baked potato, I'll eat the whole thing. Oh, me too. Skin yeah. and all. I always eat the skin. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, some people, <laughs> I always eat the I skin. I always eat the skin. <laughs> Dorm 2018. <laughs> Clip, 2019. Uh, 2019. Wow. What is today? <laughs> Clip that one. Out. Clip that out and save it for later. Yeah. Put I that always on eat Twitter. the skins. Anyways. <laughs> What's your favorite way to have a potato? You didn't say. Oh, um, to cook them, I don't cook. Um, but I guess I mean I would just eat them raw if given the the choice. Like. <laughs> I like raw potato. I know that's the... your favorite preparation. No, though. no, no. Oh. To make, make. Oh, quote, right. Sure. Um, my favorite preparation is red potatoes, uh-huh. and it's when they're um, cooked uh, where they're crispy. Yeah, yeah. Like where they're like quartered, and then they're crispy on the outsides. Yeah. And soft on the inside. Yeah. I so like... kind of like when we had our potatoes today, but just red yeah, potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Like I guess it's not technically. Is it roasted? Yeah, um, it'd be roasted. So, but they're... then like you can par cook them, which is half. Mm-hmm. And you have cooked them, and then you can like smush them down if you want, and then fry them and make them very crispy. Have you ever had a double baked potato? I have. They're very good. They're very good. But I don't like baked potatoes with like chives and bacon and all that stuff on it. It's just a big potato skin. Yeah, okay. I love, I, I, I love I a loaded potato. I didn't think of that, but yeah, isn't there a place like 
there's a restaurant chain called McAllister's where they yeah. just give you a, like a pound potato. Yeah. And that's a meal. And they put like chili in it and cheese. You can get and, a bunch of different varieties, yeah. Yeah. And that's just a meal. Like that to me is not an attractive hmm. thing. When I was in college, I ate a baked potato for lunch like every day. Really? Yeah. For and like a year. And it kept you full? Yeah. Like through lunch? See, that's the problem. Baked potatoes I, are very filling. That's the problem I have though is I feel like so sluggish after I eat mm. any potato based thing like french sure. fries or like fried potatoes or whatever. Yeah. Uh, fried potato. Okay, I take it back. Fried potatoes are also very good. Like country but, breakfast fried yeah, potatoes? Are yeah. Good. Hash browns. Mm. Hash browns are also very good. I wonder how you make hash browns. I really don't know. I think you actually have to like freeze them in the making of them. Oh, I don't know. So my mom made some. Yeah, because they're wet and they're mm. not going to fry if they're wet. Um, I think you can like blanch them or whatever. Mm. Like put them in. My favorite golden girl. <laughs> I think you can like blanch them. I don't know how that's done, but my mom would do it. She would like she had a thing that would spin, and you put a potato in it, and you you would like crank oh, cool. it, and it would like cut. Oh parts yeah, of it yeah, up, I've seen like, those. Spit yeah, like, those uh, out. Uh, it's isn't it called like a spiraler? Maybe uh, something like that. It, yeah. it was like it was this cup shaped. What's it called? Th- it was a cup shaped thing, and it had these like grooves, mm-hmm. and then the potato would sit in there, and as you put it around, it would like slowly chip away yeah. at it, and 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 then she would take it. From that immediately to the pan where the oil was Mm -hmm. boiling. And they were always a little, like, soggy. Like, they weren't always super crispy. But super crispy fries and fried potatoes and hash browns are my favorite type of Mm -hmm. potato preparation. Like, a real good crunch with some salt. Shout out to potato soup. Big fan of potato soup. I see. I don't think I'm a big fan of potato soup. Ooh. It's like a, I don't You've like had it. Had Charlie's potato soup? No. <laughs> that is the seriously. That is like one thing they're really known for. Really? Yeah. I don't potato like soup's a, awesome. I don't like a cream-based soup. God, you're missing out. I just I soup's great. I just don't like it. I, I would. Soup. I would rather if I want a thick soup, I'll go with stew instead. Mm. I'll, I'll, Fair I, enough. Which potatoes? Which was a po- yeah, thickened like a beef stew. Thickened with thickened potatoes. Thickened like a beef stew. <laughs> no, thickened thick like. <laughs> yes. No, I got gotcha. you. Like, I was being T H I C C. Yeah. Um, which is yeah, potatoes thick and like a beef stew. <laughs> and I like them thick like a beef stew. Yes. Oh, that's gross. I used to gross myself out just because beef. Yeah. It's like a beef. No, I didn't think beef was like peens. All right. Go follow Dorm everywhere. Follow Just, you everywhere. What are you I, talking about? I've got enough people following me. Home. You mean in life, To the yeah. store. <laughs> follow Dorm and give him all your money. Well, <laughs> didn't know where that was going. <laughs> At this point, maybe somebody has fallen asleep. And now Hopefully. This, and now this is just like... This is our second s- podcast. <laughs> so this is just like... Um, what is it called when you like listen to stuff in your sleep to try to learn it? Baby Einstein. <laughs> yeah, this is your we're baby Einsteining you it's, right now. It's, it's like Osm- it's not osmosis, but it's that kind of idea. Yeah, right? it's subconscious learning or something where you like mm. people will put on like a French uh, language tape and then fall asleep and then like they they're supposed to learn it and they're well, baby Einstein. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna baby Einstein y'all. Yeah. And if you're sleeping right now, go give Dorma. Money, yes. but send it to the p.o box so i get it first oh no <laughs> yeah, we, have, we never talk about the p.o box we have yeah a PO that's box. true we do have a, we have a p.o box if you uh, want to send us cards if I you don't want know what the address is write us a letter um, i know some of it but not all of it so i don't want to misspeak <laughs> misspeak misspeak uh yeah if you guys want to if you ever want to send anything our way and liddy um, runs that so send liddy stuff there i don't well you're in it you're part of it yeah uh, it's 1588 Leestown Road, um, STE 130-180, and it's in Lexington, Kentucky, which is at 40508. So if you ever want to send us a letter, start a pen pal thing. We should start a pen pal thing. Yes, agreed. We should start a pen terrible pal terrible handwriting. Thing. That's fine. We could type them and print them. Oh. We should start a pen pal thing. Then why not just email someone? <laughs> It feels good to get mail. Yeah, but why would you print it? Just I would just write it. Well, cause I would rather have someone well, suffer through my bad handwriting than <laughs> read a right. typed letter that is sent to me through the mail. You can sign your you name at the bottom. You never know. True. You can put an e-signature on emails, though. <laughs> true. That's fair. Well, the 21st century. <laughs> the technology. We can be- rebuild him. We yes. have the technology. Stronger, better, faster, harder. Daft Punk. Yes. I like it. Until next Death's time. Daft Bud. No. Until next time. Be careful where you click.